if they don't know who you are, they won't invite you. You get a very high failure rate when you first begin. After you do a few meetings, if you ask the pastors or whoever, the school teacher or whoever, to write a, a short recommendation letter, and then almost everybody I called, they would say, oh, would you send me some information? So you'd want to have a biographical sketch, uh, a little bit of your history, and I would include in the package that I sent to the pastors um, a list of things, subjects that I covered. I had sort of an outline, like dinosaurs in the Bible and the age of the earth, and the same thing I have in my catalog now for my first seven videotapes. I've not changed my outline much in ten years of doing this. And I would send them the copies of these um, recommendation letters. And I think you'll find that once you do a few and you get recommendation letters, uh, it'll grow quickly. After about two years, I was getting more calls than I could handle. And it's been that way ever since. I have to turn down a lot you know, every week. It's, it's heartbreaking because you want to go everywhere. I, sh I sure do anyway. But uh, you just can't. So you need to get an audience. Who's going to listen to you? You'll find that prisons oftentimes would love to have people come in. Old folks' homes would love to have people come in. Many churches would love to have somebody come in for a youth group uh, or to speak to their young people. But that brings up the next question of finances. Since almost none of those places are going to pay you anything to do that, how do you finance your ministry? I made three policies when I got started um, in 1989. I told the Lord if it was okay with him, I wasn't going to copyright my material that we produced. And that has really been a blessing because we get calls and letters from all over the world from people getting saved because somebody made a copy of the tape and sent it to them. It's just been, I highly recommend everybody in Christian work does that. Freely have received, freely give. So that's what we do. Then I decided I would not charge for my seminars. When pastors call, of course, one question they always ask is, how much does this seminar cost? And I just made a decision. I wouldn't charge anything. I would ask the church to provide my expenses to get there, if that's an airplane ticket or gasoline or mileage for your car and a motel and meals, etc. This is normal normal uh, for churches to do this, to supply your expenses and take a love offering. You'll find the vast majority, if you're dealing with churches, will be find that very honorable, and they will take an offering. Sometimes the offerings are really good. Sometimes they are really bad. You just never know. So you cannot, you certainly, I don't think, can count on surviving on love offerings. I, there's no way we could here. Uh, the second thing that we have for financial income is... Um, selling material. We sell our videotapes or sell the books or audios. Now there's no sense reinventing the wheel. There are so many good books available out there on the market uh, among creationists. You can call Institute for Creation Research, ICR. Their number is 619-448-0900. Or you can call Ken Ham's ministry, Answers in Genesis. Their number is 800-350-3232 or AnswersInGenesis.org. Uh, ICRs is icr.org and you can get materials from them if you buy books uh, you probably will have to buy them in case lot but you can just tell them you're an evangelist and you want to buy books at uh, book sale or a bookstore discount and typically they will give 40% off that's kind of a standard 40% off so if a book is $10 you can buy it for 6 and then you sell it for $10 the normal price um, and that can supplement your income your initial cost, of course, is inventory, where you're going to get the money to start. And it's like one fellow I had in school when I was going to Bible college. This preacher got up and said, Now, fellas, what you really need before you get started is 30 years' experience. Which, of course, is, is true, but you can't, you can't do it that way. And it's kind of like what you need to start a ministry is some money to get started, but that's the time when you don't have the money. So we started very slow uh, with videotapes. Just as we got more income, we put it right back into the ministry. And it's, it's grown like crazy now where we have a lot of employees. And we've produced about a half a million videotapes. We decided uh, early on to keep as much of our ministry as possible in-house so we could hire friends and neighbors and local people and provide jobs for our kids and also keep more control of the quality uh, of the material. So I borrowed the neighbor's VCR and he showed me how to make a copy of a tape. I didn't have a clue how to do that. And then we slowly uh, evolved the ministry up to where we bought a second VCR and then a third and a fourth. And at this time, we have about 150 VCRs where we plug in a master tape and make copies. <clears throat> and the cost of equipment is enormous. You may want to uh, start small with a small system where you make four or five copies at a time. 
If you go to um, like a Radio Shack or a audiovisual professional supply house, you can get a distribution amplifier. Uh, they have one, it has one input and six outputs called a one by six uh, distribution amplifier, where it takes the audio and the video signal both and keeps them separate and then sends it out to the VCR. So you can get a, a one by six distribution amp or DA as it's called for about a hundred dollars. And then you can have six VCRs where you play one and make six copies. I would recommend as quickly as possible in, in a new ministry that you uh, get videos of your sermons, of your messages, and produce copies for sale. Number one, it'll cause you, knowing that it's going to be put on videotape, it'll cause you to be more careful and to you know polish your presentation some. We have retaped my seminar probably 25 times, and we'll do it again every year and a half or so for the rest of my life, looks like. We're always adding material and trying to improve better pictures, etc., more visuals. <clears throat> but uh, if you can, as quickly as possible, get a very good quality master. Now, when it goes, comes to videotaping, uh, the normal tape that people play in their VCR at home is called NTSC, four letters. I don't know what it stands for, but that's the typical American format, NTSC, or sometimes called VHS. That is a very poor quality. Actually, it's about the worst quality there is as far as the number of lines it puts on the screen. As you go up to different, um, it's called a format. A VHS is one format. You can go to 8 millimeter, which is a smaller tape about the size of a deck of cards and is actually much better quality than VHS, even though the tape is smaller. The problem is if you use an 8 millimeter or a high 8 millimeter, which is even better quality yet, but the same size tape, if you use 8 millimeter or high 8, the tapes are so thin they stretch, and your master will become ruined um, in some length of time. You will wear out your master. So you'd want to make a copy of your master and use what is called a running master to copy off of, and if it stretches and starts to lose quality, you make another copy off of the master. The next quality above that would be Super VHS, SVHS. Some people say they're about the same as high 8, probably very similar, but the durability of the tape is better and because the tape's bigger and thicker, etc. You can go beyond that and go to Betacam SP, which is what television studios use, or DV Cam. We have gone to DV Cam with our ministry. The machines to record and play are about $8,000 each, and the cameras, um, you can get reasonable quality cameras for $1,500 or just hire somebody to come tape your seminar. We normally hire professionals to come in and tape the seminar, and we now do all of our own editing in-house. In the early days, we paid to have the seminar edited. I learned the hard way uh, not to even attempt to video me and the slides. I ask the crew to video me and the audience, and then we take the master tape back and we put the slides in later because uh, so often the cameraman is listening to the seminar instead of concentrating on what he's doing, and they will goof it up for you. So <clears throat> that's what we do now is we just say, look, forget the slides. I want you to video me and the audience, and then we'll uh, put the slides in later. We find that to be very successful. If your ministry grows and you need more uh, VCRs to make more copies, I would recommend a better quality DA. We use a Panasonic uh, AG DA100, and they cost about $800 or $900 each. And they have gauges on them where you can tell what the quality of the tape is, and uh, you can adjust it actually to get more audio or more video. And they are called a one by ten, where you have one input and ten outputs, and you're dealing with much better quality. And 